a D flat instead of a D natural, the second eighth note of R12. Uh, even though it's marked D natural, I play a D flat in it. Um, again, I mentioned some of the sort of preparatory exercises for this uh, for this A2. Um, couple of things, and these will be some similar ideas that I talked about with the first A2, the other, the fast one. Um, watch subtle differences with articulation patterns. For example, um, we've got a lot of slurred stuff for a while, and then measure 22, we get slur 3, tongue 3, and then we get two measures of slur 4, tongue 2, and then we're back to slur 3, tongue 3. Okay, so there, there, there's a few uh, real subtle differences along the way, but they're there, so be very careful with those. This is another great example of uh, the, the technique of employing different articulations, uh, sorry, not different articulations, different rhythms in there. Certainly you could play the whole thing instead of straight eights, you could do the dotted eights. <laughs> and so, there's yet another rhythmic figure that you could turn this into that is particularly helpful in measure uh, the area around measure 34. Notice how for a while, and even a little bit before that, when we get the notes grouped in threes, pretend for a minute that this is in 2-4 and turn it into 8 2 sixteenths. Easier said than done. And so forth. You can turn it around. Okay, so 316 is 8. Those little uh, rhythmic games, again, that you can play with this A2, going back, playing it in straight 8 notes often, will help that seem a little bit easier. Um, a couple of alternate fingering things or fingering issues to consider. Again, this B flat is not an alternate fingering, really. It's just another one to consider. Um, anytime you have an arpeggio, as I said in the first one, I think this B flat can be a real helpful fingering to use. One very nice alternate fingering is the alternate F sharp or G flat fingering. We see a lot of F G flat alternations in here. So that fingering can be very helpful in those spots. One place I'll caution you about, and then I'll be done with my spiel. <laughs> Measure 14. Measure 14 looks like a great place to use alternate G flat or F sharp. Don't do it because of that skip down to the little D flat. Your, your fingers will be out. Alright? Any questions? Yes? Um. Going from measure 34 to 53, that's 20 bars. Mm -hmm. Where would you want to read to? Okay. Hey, with the phrase after that. Because my students won't be able to make that. <laughs> what I would do in those spots is you've got basically two choices. I like to use the sort of musical approach to it. Find a place where you can put in a slight retard and grab a good breath before you move on. And here's, here would be the place that I would do it in this section from 30, 34 to 53. That's a long time. Probably right here would be one that's about this is 45 to 46 if they can make it that far. Because that's where the pattern really changes. And we've got a good cadence point right there. So something to the effect of, uh, find that to be good. <laughs> If you don't want to, if you want to keep the tempo steady, or when you're when you're practicing with a metronome, um, one thing you might do just for total rhythmic accuracy is to leave out a note or two, so you can keep it going with the metronome. But I think the more musical approach um, will, you know, will lend itself better here. And you could do a similar thing with with the bottom part. You know, find a place where maybe the pattern changes or or you have a nice cadence point coming up that you could put in that brief, uh, brief retard so you can get a nice breath. Good question. Anybody else? All right. Thanks, everyone.